Before diving into more complex finite state machines, we'll take a look at a couple more examples. So here's a slightly different way of describing a turnstile uh, as a finite state machine. What you'll notice, at, this is an, an active system now, is that as well as having two states and inputs that control the transitions, we've now got these red blocks of text. These are called actions. So when our system um, or our controller has some action associated with it, we call this an active system. The doors that we've been talking about previously are passive systems. Our description has no impact on the system itself. This one does. The double circle on the left hand side, that indicates a starting state. So by default, we'd start in the locked state. And we can see there's a couple of possible transitions that can happen. You can push a bar on a turnstile when it's locked and nothing will happen, but you can insert a ticket. When you insert the ticket, the action that happens on this machine will um, unlock it. It takes us to the unlock state. If we keep inputting the ticket after that, it will stay in the unlock state. Then when we push the bar, the action will be that will lock and it will take our turnstile back to its basic state. Um, again, um, this is an oversimplification of what you might see, uh, what you might see in the real world, but it does capture most of the significant behaviour. Um, of course, there are going to be strange scenarios with turnstiles, with people putting bicycles or putting the wrong ticket in, or a variety of other things. But our simple finite state machine we described before should account for about 90% plus of the behaviours that you might reasonably expect. Um, another example, which I'll stop and get you to try and go through yourself, is think about an alarm clock with some very simple functionality, not like the one that you can see in the picture here. So we'll say the alarm clock just has an alarm on it. Um, we can say that it has a snooze button on it, and it has, uh, let's say, it, for simplicity, that it is always active. It's either counting down to an alarm or it's in that snooze point. So stop the video, have a think about what states, inputs and actions this finite state machine might have and what might control the transitions between them. Okay, if you've had a think about it, hopefully you managed to come up with something that looks something like this. Um, in all likelihood, you came up with something far more complicated. But again, what I was trying to capture here was the basic um, functionality of an alarm clock. My three states are idle, ringing, and snoozing. And so we start in the idle state. We wait for the timer to expire. We wait to reach that key time. And when we do, the alarm starts to activate and it starts ringing. We go into that alarm ringing state. Now, when it's ringing, we can turn off the alarm entirely. That will deactivate us and take us back to the idle state for the following day. Or we can press the snooze button. The snooze button will have the action of resetting the timer, take us into the snooze state, and once the timer has expired, we'll go back into ringing. Or, when we're in the snooze state, we can take the long transition down the bottom, and we can go right the way back to the idle state. Again, pretty simple behavior, but now we're starting to see more actions. Um, the types of finite state machines we will primarily discuss are system controllers um, and descriptors of active or physical systems, while you will find the finite state machines in a variety of other ways. The real strength of finite state machines though comes when you compare them to reactive controllers. A reactive controller is a controller that responds if some sensor triggers. So if I see a bright light, I close my eyes, is an example of a simple reactive controller. Each signal maps to one and only one action, and every signal was, will always elicit that action. That is a simple reactive controller that you can see up the top. A finite state machine controller means the same signal can uh, cause different actions based on the current state the system is in. And this is the key of what allows them to create such complex, interesting behaviors that we'll see throughout the rest of the videos. The final example that you should think about before the next video is think about how you might make a finite state machine to control a four-way intersection. Think about the states, the inputs, the actions, and the transitions between them, and then in the next video we'll go along assembling and then extending this particular example.